I think we all know that Spencer Rattler has to put up some really good numbers against the Georgia Bulldogs if South Carolina is going to pull off the upset on Saturday. But what exactly do those numbers need to look like? You are Locked On Gamecocks, your daily podcast on the South Carolina Gamecocks, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, Gamecock Nation, and welcome to the special game day Eve edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your team every single day. Day. I'm Andrew Lyon, the host of this podcast. You can find my written work over on Gamecocks Digest on SI.com, and you can find the Locked On Gamecocks podcast both on YouTube and wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn. These days, every new potential hire can feel like a high stakes wager for your small business. That's why LinkedIn Jobs helps find the right people for your team faster and and for free. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. Terms and conditions do apply. There's been a big conversation this week surrounding South Carolina's matchup with the number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs on Saturday afternoon. With the main question being, can South Carolina pull off the upset? And as I've touched on multiple times this week, I think the answer to that question is yes. But the path to pulling off the upset is very small. The margin for error is very slim. And the Gamecocks are going to pull off the upset. And this might be the most obvious thing I say all year long. Spencer Rattler is going to have to go off in order for that to take place. Now, I know that you all knew this before we even got into today's show. But the question that I now want to break down with you all over the next few minutes is... What exactly does Spencer Rattler's performance have to look like in an upset victory over Georgia? There are three specific stats that I want to touch on here. First and foremost, I think that Spencer Rattler cannot have a single turnover on Saturday afternoon. I think he needs to play turnover-free football. Now, just how easy is that going to be? Probably not very much. It's probably going to be very, very difficult to pull off this task. However, if Spencer Rattler can be sacked nine times in one football game, flushed out of the pocket on several more occasions, and find a way to not give the opposing team the football once, there is a chance that he could possibly pull it off again against a more athletic and, quite frankly, a deeper Georgia front compared to what South Carolina faced with the North Carolina Tar Heels back in Week 1. But the main reason I say that Spencer Rattler cannot have a turnover in this game is because if this game plays out the way I think it could on the defensive side of the ball, and I'll just go ahead and say it, I think South Carolina's defense could end up giving up a decent amount of points here. Therefore, you cannot give the Georgia Bulldogs extra possessions in this game where they can either score in short field position or... They can take the football, and they can just lean on the Gamecocks defense. Besides the 2019 upset win over the Bulldogs in Athens, since Kirby Smart has been at Georgia, South Carolina has just seemingly been overmatched in the trenches every single year against this Bulldogs squad. And while Georgia's offensive line in particular has not had exactly the start they would have liked so far this season, that does not mean that these guys cannot flip a switch in this ball game and make this the game where they sort of arrive for the 2023 season. I have also made no bones about the fact that I'm not impressed with the way South Carolina's defense has performed overall so far. And so this could be a game where if Georgia's offensive line, using some of the motivation from the past two weeks, steps up to the plate... It could be a long day for the Gamecock defensive front. There could be some long, grinded-out type drives that Georgia puts together. So bottom line, because of that, I really think that it is imperative. Spencer Rattler, he cannot give Georgia extra possessions through turnovers on Saturday. That's number one. Number two, Spencer Rattler, in my opinion, needs to have four passing touchdowns in Athens. Now, some people might think that this number is a little bit too low, but I think that you'll understand why I have that exact number when I give you my third reason in a couple of minutes. 
But clearly, this is a game where you cannot settle for too many field goals. You're going to have to score some touchdowns here. You're going to have to make some plays happen in the red zone area. If South Carolina ends up getting inside the 10-yard line, admittedly, I don't think that they're going to have a very easy time scoring touchdowns against that Bulldog defense, especially with the struggles that they've had in the run game so far this year. Which leads me to this point. Spencer Rattler's got to have some explosive plays in this game. And a couple of those explosive plays might have to end up in scores. Whether that means that you throw a bomb to Xavier Leggett down the sideline, or maybe you do catch Glenn Schumann and his defensive coaching staff off guard on a play or two. Maybe you pull off a trick play if you decide to roll one out. I mean, South Carolina started their game against North Carolina with a trick play, so I don't see why that couldn't be the case on Saturday afternoon. You're going to need a bunch of big-time plays made in this game, and some of those are going to have to, one way or another, lead to scores, and I think we all know at this point it's not going to be via the ground. Maybe Lenore Sellers or Mario Anderson could help you out if the Gamecocks play them like I said they should on the Wednesday show that we had. But for Spencer Rattler, since obviously he's going to be the guy you lean on in this game, he's going to have to put the ball in the end zone several times in this matchup. The last stat that I'll throw out there, I think Spencer Rattler needs to throw for at least 360 passing yards. Now, you might be sitting there wondering, how do you get to this number? What kind of mathematical equation are you using here? The way I got to this number is actually quite simple. So if South Carolina scores four passing touchdowns, and let's say that's all the offensive touchdowns they score on the day, that probably means that you're driving about the length of the field. So say South Carolina starts at the 25-yard line. That would be about three or four 75-yard drives and some sporadic rushing yards here and there. Spencer Rattler, that's going to give him the majority of these yards right here. It also means that Spencer Rattler, though, has put together some other drives that have led to positive end results, such as maybe a couple of field goals. And again, maybe a special teams trick play that winds up in a score. I think you're going to have to see that if you're South Carolina on Saturday. You're not going to want to settle for too many field goals, but if this offense is clicking, if it's clicking enough, I should say, and they are making plays happen against this Georgia defense, then it's okay if you send out Mitch Jeter on a couple different occasions. You just don't want to have to do it too often in this matchup if you want to pull off the upset. So for Spencer Rattler, to go over this again real quickly, you cannot turn over the ball one time. I think that that's pretty evident. He's going to need to throw four passing touchdowns, maybe more, depending on how this game plays out. And he's going to have to throw, for in my opinion, at least 360 passing touchdowns yards. If you're going to beat this Georgia defense, based on what we've seen over the past few years when the Bulldogs have dropped the rare game to an opponent, you have to be able to air the football out. You have to have a quarterback that just plays out of his mind, like a Bryce Young, like a CJ Stroud potentially, the way he played in last year's playoff, like a Joe Burrow, a Mac Jones. That's the kind of performance that Spencer Rattler is going to have to put together if he is going to lead South Carolina to an improbable upset over the number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs in Athens on Saturday afternoon. And this game is a very important game for a multitude of reasons. But to me, this is an important game for a reason that most of you might not list. We're going to dive into what that reason is and why this game is an important game in just a couple moments right here on Locked On Gamecocks. Today's show is brought to you by LinkedIn Jobs. Now, if you're a small business owner out there, you understand good and well that if you want your small business to succeed long term, you've got to have really good employees in your business. You've got to have people that fulfill their roles really well, whether that is someone that deals with maybe inventory and supply. Maybe it's someone that deals with customer service. Maybe it's someone that deals with marketing and advertising. 
You need people to fill in different roles so that your company can thrive in the long run. And so if you're somebody that's looking for those kind of employees, then you need to check out LinkedIn Jobs today. Just add your job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you're hiring and utilize tools like screening questions to filter through all the viable candidates. It's why small businesses rate LinkedIn Jobs number one in delivering quality hires. LinkedIn Jobs helps you find the qualified candidates you want to talk to faster. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free today. Terms and conditions do apply. Welcome back to this Friday edition of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast, where we cover your South Carolina Gamecocks every single day in just 30 minutes. And as always, thank you to each and every one of you every day for making the Locked On Gamecocks podcast your daily choice for South Carolina Gamecocks sports coverage. If you want a little bit of a perspective from the Georgia side of things, then be sure to go and check out my Thursday crossover show that I did with Locked On Bulldogs co-host Daniel Monroe. We went over a lot of really good stuff about this matchup in that show, so be sure to check it out both on YouTube and or wherever you get your audio podcasts daily. This game is an extremely important one for South Carolina, but maybe not for the reason that most of you might suspect. Because if you're asked, well, why is this game so important for the Gamecocks? You might list the following reasons. It's South Carolina versus Georgia. It's the most organic SEC rivalry that South Carolina has in this conference. It's the first SEC game of the season. So it's a tone setter type of game for what you're going to be facing for the rest of the year. You might say it's a game that's important because you need to defend your player in Taka Hemingway for all of the ridiculous slander that he's taken this week because of a comment that he made back in July at SEC Media Days. That's a whole other conversation for a different day. But the real reason why this game is important for South Carolina is they need to be competitive in this game in order to regain some national respect. Let's get to this conversation by starting off with the perception side of things. This was obviously an offseason leading into the 2023 season that had a lot of promise that surrounded South Carolina's football program because of the way they ended things in 2022, blowing out the Tennessee Volunteers in their second-to-last regular season game, effectively knocking them out of the college football playoffs. The Clemson Tigers ending their long winning streak against you, ending a 40-game home winning streak, and basically knocking them out of playoff contention as well in the final week of the regular season. And then you go into the Gator Bowl, and you play a still pretty solid Notre Dame team, one of the biggest brands in the entire sport, if not the whole world, when it comes to athletics. You played them really, really tight in a Gator Bowl for the ages. And then the North Carolina game happened. You not only lost that game against the Tar Heels, but the way that you lost was also, in a way, embarrassing because you got manhandled. North Carolina was more physical than you along the line of scrimmage on both sides of the football. And that is one of the last ways I think any Gamecock fan thought that North Carolina maybe would have defeated the Gamecocks in week one. And the thing is, South Carolina, they got manhandled by North Carolina week one, but taking this to the Georgia series, the Gamecocks have not really been competitive in this series. Over the past three years alone, South Carolina has been outscored by Georgia 133-36, to and they have lost each game by an average margin of 32.3 points. If you're South Carolina in this football team, obviously you want to win this football game. And I think that all of us would agree that we would like to see the Gamecocks win this football game. It would be probably the biggest upset of the season in the entire sport. And South Carolina, once again, would have their team, their logo plastered all across televisions, streaming networks, you name it. But at the same time, the Gamecocks need to be able to walk away from this game on Saturday knowing that they gave 
Georgia a really good fight, win or lose. That does not mean go out there and get blown out 48-7 to again. And I know I'm saying that like they had the choice of getting blown out or not, and I'm not trying to put it that way. But again, last year, for example, some people thought you could upset the Bulldogs in Columbia, and it wound up being the complete opposite. It was embarrassing. And then you have this North Carolina game that takes place in week one, and it sort of feels like that if South Carolina goes into Athens on Saturday afternoon, and they basically allow the Bulldogs to do whatever the heck they want to do on both sides of the ball, and essentially run away with this game early, they will be back at square one in terms of trying to regain that national respect, the respect that they got after winning games against Tennessee and Clemson. It'll be back to, well, I got to see to believe it, but they'll have to do even more. And South Carolina is not one of those teams that's afforded the benefit of the doubt like other programs are. Now, I do think South Carolina can't be competitive in this game. Because again, you've got number seven at quarterback. You've got some skill weapons on the outside and at the tight end position. You've got a defense that, while they have not performed maybe up to their full potential so far this year, at the very least, you know they're going to be motivated. They've got some extra motivation this week because of what else happened with Tonka. And again, I guess the lack of quote-unquote respect that he had for Georgia's home environment back in the summertime. And you know you've got a good special teams unit. And you've got a staff that has found a way to game plan for an upset multiple times before. So it's not like that, again, South Carolina has no chance to be competitive in this game. But the point is you have to be because perception is reality in the sport of college football, whether fans like it or not. So South Carolina, they cannot afford to be dog-walked, essentially, in this contest. Plus, for recruiting purposes, this is a big game for South Carolina. The state of Georgia is in the recruiting footprint. It is one of the most important states in their footprint. They've got some big-time targets that are going to be in attendance for this game. The headliner out of that group is Elijah Griffin for the 2025 class. Amari Adams from the 2025 class, but from the state of South Carolina, he's also going to be there. You do not want to go out there in front of those recruits that are going to be taking in that game and get blown out. You don't want to lose like 52-7 to and look like that you don't even belong on the football field with Georgia. You do not want that to happen. You at least want to put up a good, solid showing where people can walk away and say, you know what, South Carolina played Georgia pretty decently in Athens today. You want that to be the case. Because if it's the opposite, then it can have a somewhat negative perception on recruits' minds. Because they might sit there and think, this team might have a little bit more of a ways to go than I thought they did. They've told me that I'm the missing piece in my respective unit. But it looks like they got a lot of missing pieces. You do not want these recruits thinking that way. So for that reason, and also for the reason that surrounds perception, this game is extremely important for South Carolina on Saturday. In terms of being strictly competitive against what is right now the standard in the sport of college football. Now, we're going to summarize everything that I've sort of gone over this week and my overall thoughts on this game heading into it on Saturday in just a couple of moments. Today's show is brought to you by FanDuel. FanDuel has got a great deal going right now for everyone that decides to join them. They are America's number one sports book, so I'm not sure what all you need to be told. But if you do need more reason to join them, new customers right now can bet $5.00 and get 200 in bonus bets guaranteed. Plus, all customers who bet $5 will get $100 off NFL Sunday ticket from YouTube and YouTube TV. We're just one week into the regular season here in the NFL, and there were some teams that looked really impressive in Week 1, including the San Francisco 49ers. Their Super Bowl odds are currently listed at plus 750 by the FanDuel odds makers. Now's the best time to join FanDuel. The app is easy to use and you can bet on everything from spreads to player props and more. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season with an offer you won't want to miss. FanDuel is the official betting partner of the NFL. Okay, now let's put a bow on everything that we've talked about up to this point in the week 
heading into South Carolina's first SEC contest of the season against the number one ranked Georgia Bulldogs. Obviously, on paper, for the most part, the odds are stacked against South Carolina in multiple different ways. Georgia is a team that has greatly benefited from the fact that they have not played a legitimate opponent to this point in the season. I mean, they played UT Martin and they played Ball State. Not exactly two world beaters by any means. While South Carolina, they've played North Carolina, obviously right now one of the better ACC teams. And they also played a really good FCS team in Furman that they could not necessarily just uh, go vanilla against for 60 minutes. And so South Carolina's had to put a lot of stuff on film that Georgia hasn't had to do on their end. So that's one advantage the Bulldogs do have. This game is taking place in Athens. Sanford Stadium obviously holds a ton of people, and they can get loud in that stadium. There's no question about that. It's the first SEC game of the season, so you know that they are starving for a game to get excited about, and this is going to be one of those kind of games. South Carolina, in terms of the line of scrimmage, there's no doubt that especially on the offensive side of the ball, they're a bit outmatched at certain spots in terms of overall talent and depth. You just cannot get around that. But South Carolina does also have some factors that could fall their way. Spencer Rattler, again, he is the kind of quarterback that you need if you're going to pull off an upset against this kind of football team. He is a guy that's proven that he can do it before. And so far this season... He is playing his most consistent ball that he has played probably in his entire football career, at the very minimum since he arrived in Columbia. So Spencer Rattler right now, he's playing on a whole different level compared to a lot of other quarterbacks in this conference. And again, he has faced good competition compared to some of the other guys and what they've played. Joe Milton's played like Virginia and who? Austin P. I mean, come on now. No comparison between the teams that both those guys have played against. And Spencer Rattler has by far looked like the better quarterback, despite not having much of a run game, and at times, not much pass protection in front of him. You've got good skill weapons. You've got Xavier Leggett, a wide receiver who has taken that step. He finally looks like the wide receiver that we all have always thought he could be. Juice Wells. It sounds like he's getting healthier. I'm not willing to say he's 100% yet, but it seems like he's at least getting closer and closer as time continues to progress. Defensively, yes, you're a bit dinged up in the secondary, but you know you got some guys back there that can make plays for you. Marcel Stahl has played in a ton of big games now at this point in his career. He's not going to be faced by the environment that he's going to be playing in front of on Saturday afternoon. Nick, I mean, worry. He might not be 100% himself. He's at least going to go out there, and I would say give it a go. And if he's dealing with too much pain, then Jalen Kilgore, I'm sorry. You're just going to have to go through what they went through last year. Nick Evan wearing DQ Smith, that is. But you got DQ Smith back there who could help out as well. Uh, Donald Fortune has played some pretty decent ball, besides a couple of lapses on certain plays in the short area of the passing game. The linebacker core is taking a step forward. You've got certain areas that have definitely progressed throughout this season. It's my overall point. But the thing I keep coming back to is that for South Carolina to pull off the upset, for South Carolina to do what most people outside of the state of South Carolina are not expecting them to do on Saturday, they've got to do multiple things and probably have some areas on the stat sheet fall their way. And when you have to count up so many factors together for an upset to take place, more than likely, the upset is just not going to happen. And again, I don't think that means that South Carolina can't be competitive in this game. I think they can be competitive. But I just don't think they have enough. If South Carolina's offensive line was much stronger than it is right now, I would feel a little bit differently about this game because I could see a path where South Carolina turns this into an absolute shootout and they would have the guys to win a shootout type of game. But that's just not where the Gamecocks are at right now. Even if you throw some of those freshmen out there and they make some good plays, trying to do that against Georgia for 60 minutes, right now it's one of the toughest tasks in this entire sport. And I just don't think that they're there quite yet. So I think that Georgia is going to win this game by a final score of 38-21. to If you missed 
the score prediction talk on the Thursday crossover show I did with Locked On Bulldogs co-host Daniel Monroe. I do think that South Carolina's going to cover the spread. The spread right now, I believe, is still at plus 27 and a half points, according to FanDuel. So if you think South Carolina's going to be competitive, then feel free to bet on that spread. I'm not going to say you should because I don't see too many routes, admittedly, where South Carolina is both competitive and covers that spread. So it's just going to be one of those weeks where, again, Spencer Rattler's going to have to go off. A lot of your things have to go your way. And if that's the case, then more than likely... They're going to have some of their plays. They're going to make you raise your eyebrows, but might not be much more than that. So with that being said, that's going to do it for this game day eve edition of the Lockdown Gamecocks podcast. Thank you all so much for tuning in as always. What do you think Spencer Aller has to do in an upset scenario here for South Carolina? Why do you think this game is important? Do you agree with the point that I've made or do you completely disagree with it? And lastly, what are your game predictions for this contest against the number one ranked Bulldogs. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comments section if you watch today's show on YouTube or shoot me a direct message on Twitter at a line underscore SC if you listen to today's show on an audio podcast app. But as always, thank y'all for tuning in. Have a great rest of your Friday, a fantastic weekend. Enjoy the slate of games. And if you're going to Athens, be safe and good luck cheering on the Gamecocks. I'll be sure to catch y'all on the next show of the Locked On Gamecocks podcast.